Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a really fun project for you today. This project is based on the Disappearing Pinwheel and so we're calling it Disappearing Pinwheel 5. The idea came from our friend Eunice and I just can't wait to show you this. So let's take a look at the quilt behind me. Isn't this gorgeous? I mean, it is fun, it is bright, it is happy, and of course the fabric lends itself to that as well. The fabric we're using today is called Extravaganza, and it's by Lila Tuller for Riley Blake, and it's just a happy, happy line. So to make this quilt, what you're going to need is one packet of 10 inch squares, 42 of them. And again, we're using this extravaganza line by Lila Tuller, which is just so beautiful. You're also going to need one packet of 10 inch squares for your background fabric. You're going to need three quarters of a yard for this little inner border right here. And for your outer border, you're going to need a yard and three quarters because we put a nice big six inch border on this just to make it fun. So what we're talking about today is this pinwheel block right here. We need to make a pinwheel. And how we do that is we're going to put two squares together with contrast. We've used our colored print and our white print. And we are going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside edge. Now I've already done that here and uh, you can see. So there I've got my sewing line all the way around the outside edge. Then we're going to cut it diagonally both directions. So we're going to take our ruler and we're going to lay it from corner to corner like this. We're going to make our cut and then we're going to put it corner to corner this way and again make our cut. Now what we have is four half square triangles right away and we need to press those. So let's go to the ironing board over here. All right, so I'm just going to lay these on top, give them a quick setting of the seams. And when you set the seams, basically you're just relaxing the, thread, the threads so that they lay nicer. We're just going to roll these back like this. And one more. And now what we've got to do here is we're going to make a pinwheel. So we are going to put these together. And when you make a pinwheel, it goes together light, dark. I'm sorry, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. And all of our seams are going to run to the center like this. There you go. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to sew these two together right here on this side and these two together right here. So let's take these to the sewing machine and we're going to sew these together. And I like to take a few uh, stitches and then kind of anchor myself and then go down the side just straight down. We're doing a quarter of an inch. Now because these are on the bias, you can really make them fit. So if, you're, if your cut lines are just a little off or your seam lines are just a little off, you just make them fit. You just line them up so that they lay nice together. Now we're going to um, press these open so they lay nice and flat. And we want to make our seams go the opposite way. So we're going to want this seam to lay down this way. That way they can nest nicely. And by nesting, what I mean is they're going to lay together really nice. So we're, when we put these this way, you should have one outer seam going that way and the other seam going that way. And that's what we've got here. And then we're going to match these two middle seams up right snug them. You can just feel them with your fingers when there's no, no uh, space in there. You see how this one just appears a little bit longer? Well, because we're on the bias, we're just going to hold those two together and we're just going to give them a little encouragement to match up. And so that will help them just match up a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and start this. Make sure our centers are lined up. Make sure that seam stays laying down. It kind of popped up right there. There we go. I'm going to line this up as well. And now we get to press this and well, I'm going to trim off. I'm going to trim off these little bunny ears right here. 
and then we're going to press this. Now, if you find that you have uh, a lot of a lot of seams coming together right here, you can press that seam open. I'm just going to press it to one side. And I'm just going to sit my iron right on here in this middle, give it a burst of steam, make sure it lays down really nice, and we've got a great looking pinwheel right here. All right. So now, when we do the, all the other disappearing pinwheels, we're cutting on all four sides. For this pinwheel, the disappearing pinwheel five, we are only going to cut on two sides. This is so much fun. So um, we're going to come two and an eighth inches out from the center seam right here. Two and an eighth, just like that. And we're going to make our cut. And then we're going to come two and an eighth inches. Let me just turn that right around from the center seam on the other side, two and an eighth, just like this. Just like that. And now we have these three great pieces like this, and that's all the cutting we have to do. So we're making two cuts like this. We're going to move this to the outside and put this these on the outsides. So this one moves to the middle. So again, let me, I feel like I did like a shuffling game for you there. Let me put it back together so you can see what I did. So here's our pinwheel, because this is something you, I really don't want you to lose. And I've actually just in my brain occurred an easier way to do this. I think if we turn these outside pieces around, it might work. <gasps> it does. So that's easier. That's easier for you to see. All right, so then we're gonna sew this together. And so we're just gonna lay this on here and sew this piece down. Okay, so once you get your block all done, you're gonna head to the ironing board and give it a press. Make sure it's nice and flat, and then this is your block. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's quick, it's easy. It looks like you worked really hard, and, uh, but it's a great little block. Now, one of the things I wanna point out is that this is now a rectangle. Because we only took the seams on two sides, it is no longer a square block, so it's a rectangle. So then when you go to put them together, you're just gonna put them together side by side by side. You can't turn the block, it won't fit if you turn it. You just have to put it together side by side. So because we have 42, uh, blocks in our pre-cut packet, you're going to have six across and seven rows. So let's take a look at how we're going to put those together. You're just going to set them together like this and they will naturally checkerboard right there. And so you're going to do six of these in a row and then you're going to come back along and add another row doing the exact same thing and then these will automatically checkerboard as well too. So it's just a great little project. Let's look at how this quilt came together. So you can see we've got six blocks up here and seven rows down. And it just is just magical how much work it looks like you did. And yet it's really, really fun. So just a few tips to help this go easier for you. When you're ready to put your pinwheels together, make sure they're all going the same direction. Just all going the same direction. As a matter of fact, I would go ahead and sew all my pinwheels together first. That will make it easy for you and they'll all be done. Also, when you're cutting that, that seam, that two and an eighth inch, eighth inch seam, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're only cutting on two sides. So you can relax about that and not die over it having to be so perfect. Anyway, I really enjoyed putting this together. I hope you do too. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Disappearing Pinwheel 5 from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.